President Trump tweeted, all is well after Iranian missile attacks on bases in Iraq tonight. U.S. officials say there are very few of any casualties at the bases hosting U.S. military forces. More than a dozen ballistic missiles targeted Iraq's El Assad Air Base, Erbil Air Base, was also hit. The attack comes hours after the funeral for Iranian military general Qasem Soleimani. Iran has vowed retaliation for the killing of Soleimani. Retired Marine Corps Gunnery Sergeant Hugh Tyson served for 17 years. Some of those years he served at one of the bases hit, Al-Assad Air Base. And Hugh, we were hearing tonight that as those missiles were coming in, troops were seeking shelter, uh, trying to protect themselves. So you were there multiple times with the Marine Corps. That was where you went for your supplies when you were on your four different tours, three in Iraq. So what would it be like as missiles are coming in? Where are they going? What's the protection that's provided on Al-Assad? This is something that the, the Marines that are there right now, 7th Marine Regiment specifically, are, they plan for this, they train for this, this is, they, do, they run rehearsals all the time um, for this type of scenario. And there are bunkers probably within 50 to 100 meters of their living quarters where they're able to shelter in place and get accountability of, of their Marines. Uh, probably about 12 inches to 18 inches thick concrete. And there's all branches stationed at Al-Assad right now. When I went there, there were all, all four branches were present there, but primarily uh, Marine Corps. And since Monday night, the bases in the Middle East have been on what they're calling a high alert yep. because of the escalating tensions with Iran. Sure. So what does that mean when you're on the base? Uh, very little sleep for the Marines there. I mean, it means you're reinforcing uh, everything. Al-Assad's such a big base that there's camps within a camp. So you have an external perimeter, you've got internal perimeters, and you're reinforcing all those with... Uh, more trucks, more weapons, and more Marines than normal, which means it, it basically uh, ups the uh, schedule of everybody there and, and they're going to lose sleep. And as they're trying to run for protection, what's that alert system like where they know something's incoming? Sure. Well, uh, the 11th Marines is uh, the unit that provides the, the counter battery uh, radar system. So there usually is a, a a really good amount of time, lead time, maybe um, up to two or three minutes to get everybody into those bunkers so they can shelter in place. And Al-Assad is a big base, the biggest one in Iraq for sure. Talk to people just about how big it is and Correct. what's on the base. Sure, it was the main airfield, air base and supply base for uh, the Marine Corps when they were in um, full operations in Al Anbar province and still as they support the Iraqi army today. It's about twice the size of Forest Park and I would say it's about 90 percent unoccupied, uh, meaning that troop quarters only take up a very small portion of the base. And the, the other 90 percent is airfields? or Airfields, there are ranges, there's mortar ranges, there are weapons ranges, machine gun ranges, um, rifle ranges, uh, places to test weapons. There's a lot of open fields, open ground. It's in the middle of the desert, right? Wow, so 90% is like that. Sure. Now, when you were there, did you ever have to get into these bunkers? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, we several times a month. We As would a take... practice or in a real emergency? Both. No, I, we, we took actual mortars and rocket fire uh, a couple times a month, but we ran a lot of drills as well to prepare our Marines, and I'm sure there are good gunnery sergeants there today doing exactly that. Uh, but the insurgents, the type of rockets they were firing at us were, were aim, and, aim and shoot, and they, their accuracy was horrendous. So, and it's not uncommon to have rockets shot towards the base. Correct. I mean, that happened, like you said, every time you were there, a couple times a month that would happen. Right, right. But this is, we're talking about a ballistic missile. So explain and just a accuracy. little bit. And the accuracy. Yeah, right. I would say the accuracy um, and the payload of these rockets is, is significantly higher than what we saw from the insurgents. All right, Hugh, thank you for coming down here on short notice and spending some time with us and offering some perspective about the base. Sure. And we appreciate your service. Thank you. 17 years. Thanks, Hugh Tyson. Thank, thank you. you. Mike.